Welcome to Ilium Motors. We have two debuts today. One is our first time at the Los Angeles International Auto Show, and the second one is the vehicle behind me. As a housekeeping note, we will have uh, media cards available with the link to our media kit. After the show, you can see Pam or myself. I'll hand those out to you. Without further ado, though, I would like to introduce our founder and my friend, Paul Elio. Good morning. So, in case not all of you are up to speed on uh, what Elio is and what we're doing, uh, just a quick uh, going over the basics. Our vehicle is designed to achieve 84 miles per gallon, made in Shreveport, Louisiana, with 90% North American content and with a target and sticker price of $6,800. Um, and as compelling as the product is, what I think is more important is the impact of the project. It does some special things for, for our country, I believe. Uh, with the strong reliance on North American content, we're going to create thousands of jobs in the factory in Shreveport and thousands more in the supply base across the country. Secondly, after five years of sales, we can reduce total U.S. gas consumption by nearly a half a percent. That's a meaningful number. Whether your biggest concerns are trade deficit due to foreign oil or greenhouse gases, the answer is the same. Use less oil. And I think this project does it better than anyone. And lastly, and it doesn't immediately leap off the page for you, is if you're struggling in this country, your biggest issue is mobility. There is a, a study done by a Harvard uh, economist that said that mobility is the number one predictor on whether you get out of poverty or not. It correlates better than crime rates in your community, the number of two parents household, two parent uh, households in your community, or, or test scores in your grade schools. The number one predictor is mobility. There's a study out of New Jersey that says that 60% of their chronically unemployed have turned down jobs because they had no way to get to the job. And at $6,800 and 84 miles per gallon, people can afford to get to the job. Um, as you go down this journey from a paper napkin ske sketch to ultimately the first saleable vehicle coming off the production line, there are a lot of milestones along the way, and we've achieved several of those. You know, conglomerating the supply base that's uh, on our sheets, uh, we have 34 of the world's best suppliers. I think that was a huge milestone for us. Our business partners like Pep Boys, um, the previous prototypes that showed uh, a progress on the engineering side. Um, today we have couple more milestones we want to share with you. So we are doing rewards crowdfunding. We're taking reservations on our vehicle. And this week we have over 47,000 people who put money down on a, a Melio. And this week we crossed over the $20 million line in total reservation dollars. And we believe that makes us the biggest uh, rewards crowdfunded project ever. Uh, to our knowledge, the Pebble Watch currently uh, used to hold the record at 20 million, now we're over 20. And so I think we are now the, the largest funded, crowdfunded project ever. Next is Reg A Plus. So if you're not up to speed on that, uh, the federal government created a new way to raise money. It became available in June, June 19th to be exact. And it allows companies to sell stock to non-credit investors. So up to this point, if you wanted to be an early investor in Facebook or Uber or you know pick your startup, you had to be an accredited investor. So now if you're raising less than $50 million, you can go straight to the public and accept money from non-accredited investors. So on June 19th, the SEC allowed you to do what they call test the waters. And so how it works, if you go to startengine.com, we say, are you interested in investing in Helio? Because we're thinking about doing a Reg A plus offering. And if you're interested in investing, how much do you think you would, would invest? Um, as of this morning, we had $45,900,000 in non-binding indications of interest to raise 25 million. So we believe, again, that we are the most successful at the testing the water phase. Based on our success, we applied to the SEC, we've gone back and forth a couple of times, and we believe we are on the verge of getting our qualification from the SEC and can go back to those folks and uh, allow them to make their investment in Helio Motors. Um, I think this is an enormous deal for uh, our country because I think there's a lot of startups that, that will use this facility to create jobs. Uh, I also think it's a huge deal for Helio Motors. The 
biggest single risk, I think, to this project has been funding risk, and the, the primary source of delays in the timeline has been funding delays. And as we go through this process of Reg A Plus, then ultimately listing on the OTCQX and become a public company, we have a lot more tools in our toolkits to raise money in the future, and I think it substantially mitigates our funding risk going forward. So we're very excited about this process as, as it comes to its uh, final conclusion. But what you're really here to see is the P5, right? Um, so this is the, the fifth and last of our prototype series. Uh, with the Reg A round of, of uh, investment, we're going to build 25 engineering vehicles or E-series vehicles that we will sadly destroy, right? Front side rear impact durability. Um, so the big changes on the P5, uh, there's some minor styling changes. We continue to let the wind uh, change the design in our pursuit of 84 miles per gallon. But the biggest change is it's this first vehicle with an helio motor engine in it. Um, and that's not a trivial milestone, right? The last time a new American startup showed a, a vehicle with its own engine in it was Nash in 1951. So it's been nearly 65 years since somebody has unveiled a vehicle with its own engine. And I, I, when I've said that, people say, well, what about Tesla? I'm like, well, that's a motor. <laughs> so um, this is an engine. So at any rate. Um, and, and people have questioned, why did we develop our own engine? And there's several reasons. The first is practicality. Several years ago, when we really started flushing this out, uh, nobody would believe our volume, right? Without the 47,000 reservations back validating the business model, nobody would believe our volume, and, and we didn't have access to another engine. Uh, also, it turns out all the people who make engines are, are capitalists, and they're going to make money on it. And that would blow our price point, having that markup in, in our, our bill of materials. And lastly, we couldn't achieve our goals with another engine. When the big guys develop an engine, it's aimed at several platforms, and it's good for all, but best for none. This is a point design. This has been designed specifically for Helio Motors to get uh, 0 to 60 under 10 seconds, over 100 miles an hour, 84 miles per gallon on the highway, and achieve our price goals. Without that dedication to our objectives, we'd never be able to hit those objectives. And le the last reason to do it is, is emotional. The, the engine is the heart of a vehicle. And like the team that has developed this uh, vehicle, this uh, vehicle has an amazing heart. And let me introduce you to the P5, the first vehicle with the heart of Emilio. Are there any questions? It's not designed for E85. Did I have a? Do you have a, do you have a sense how many orders you've taken so far? How are you on the target? Uh, like I said, we have 47,000 people who put money down on an Elio. When do you expect first delivery? Yeah. Uh, our targeted delivery date is fourth quarter of 2016. So the, the premise is, you know, so that I think there's two demographics. Um, Americans buy big vehicles for a reason, right? We like to disparage ourselves because we drive big vehicles, but we have a purpose. You know, you cannot haul plywood in a Prius, and you can't tow a boat with a Versa. So when we buy these big vehicles, we have a purpose in mind, 
And because small cars are too expensive and don't get good enough gas mileage, they're an or choice for most families. They can't afford both a big car and a small car. So you go to the big car because you have a reason for it. At $6,800 and 84 miles per gallon, this becomes an and choice for people. So I think for the upper two thirds of the demographic, this becomes an and vehicle, right? And then for folks struggling, it's primary transportation. Realistically, there have been, just in the last decade, over 10 startups that looked promising. Fisker, Amp, and so on. Yep. None of, one of them made it, Tesla, only because Wall Street's in love with it. They're losing $20,000 a vehicle. We don't know for Why should anybody believe that you guys will make it? That's, that's a great question. So I, I think we're doing things different in a lot of ways. First of all, there, there's no new technology allowed on this vehicle. We call it the four must, it's on every single engineer's desk. 84 miles per gallon, $6,800, safe, no new technology. So every part on this vehicle is either in production or slight modification from something that's already in production. So we substantially mitigate the technical risk. Um, I think we've created the right partnerships. If you like, you can't put, look at the sheet anymore. If you look at the sheet, that's not there. Um, it is the who's who of the global supply base. It's the same guys that are helping Ford, Toyota, GM, and Chrysler uh, launch vehicles. Um, I think that uh, we have uh, a value proposition that makes sense to folks. Uh, so I think we have the volume there. Um, and we have a, a decent margin embedded in that. So we will be profitable. Yes. Yes. Um, does it have OPD on board diagnostic? Because I do a lot of IoT. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Close on the four miles per gallon. Are you well, we're, it's all simulation right now, so we're working with uh, aerodynamic models, rolling resistance, and, uh, and a very sophisticated engine model. And I think last time I checked, we were like at 81.6. So we're in the neighborhood. It may go a little up, a little down. You know, it'll definitely be over 75. I, I really want it over 80. I'm hoping for 84. What are you doing about safety technology? Where do you qualify? Because you're actually not going to meet the heads of car regulation free wheel design. So, so this is technically a motorcycle. The federal government says if you have three wheels or less on the ground, you're a motorcycle, not a car. So this vehicle does not have to have seat belts or an airbag. We do, right? It's got three airbags, two seat belts, electronic stability control, ABS brakes. Um, we are de designing it to the highest automotive safety standards. If you notice, it's got the same wheelbase as a Honda Accord. So it's half a vehicle, but it's half of a full-size vehicle. So we have ample crunch, crush zones. So we believe we will be very competitive on uh, the safety scale with other uh, cars that are on the road. Are there any safety bars inside of the, of the door? Yes, well. and, and it's got a full full roll cage as well. And if you go to our website, you can see some of the safety uh, uh, animations of, of us simulating these those tests. And are you targeting only the U.S. Uh, for the sale of it? Yes. So how I, I I believe that ultimately this will be a global vehicle. So how I put it is, right now I have aspirations to go global, but no plans. Right? If I tell you I'm going to go global, you're going to say, well, what's your distribution model in uh, Europe? How are you going to service it in Asia? So until we get the first vehicle off the line in the quality man in the U.S., we have aspirations to go global, but no plans. The day after, I'm going to start making some plans. You told me you've actually driven this car, you drove it around in Arizona. Yes. Prime, prime. It, it's fun. You know, the, the architecture itself is fun, sitting right between the front two wheels. Um, and and the, the motor and transmission uh, work very well. Um, it was a short drive, but uh, I really, it, it's fun to drive. Yes? Why should we be born? Well, um, that facility was available in the GM bankruptcy. <coughs> And so it's a 4 million square foot facility. Uh, to put that number in perspective, the Empire State Building is 2.8 million square feet. So it's almost one and a half Empire State Buildings. And GM left all the equipment behind. So we, we own just about everything you can possibly imagine to manufacture a vehicle. It's a huge head start to production by, by acquiring that site. Any other questions? Yes, we're, we're on the verge. I would expect any day. I, I don't know how much I can say about that, so we'll, we'll leave it to We're on the verge. Can you estimate how much more money you need to raise 
about 200 million. So, and that's in our offering circular, which is online at startengine.com. So it's a $300 million project. We've raised about 75 so far. This, uh, the Reg A Plus, we anticipate raising another 25, which puts us at 100 million. That leaves us 200 million left to raise. We have $186 million loan application in with the ATVM uh, that we feel very good about. If you go to their website, the, the, one of the key uh, reasons you get a loan, obviously, other than being a quality company, is uh, your impact on U.S. fuel usage. And as I explained, I don't think there's another project that fits that well. So I, I think we have a, a legitimate shot at uh, getting that approval. Any other uh, questions? All right, well, hey, oh, yes. But this is plays in the ride share. Um, obviously, because of the price point, it, there's a big advantage there. I think that there's a huge advantage for fleets, right? If you have people driving around with a briefcase uh, visiting clients, uh, if you're a nurse who's doing uh, in-home health care, there's a lot of places where you have one person driving around by themselves, and this thing more than pays for itself. So I think there's a lot of fleet applications. I don't know about that one specifically. Thank you. What is your current service model? Uh, so uh, we're going to do direct sales, uh, uh, kind of like Tesla, and then uh, Pep Boys has agreed to be our authorized service provider. So we have 800 authorized service locations day one, which is a real luxury for a startup. Any other uh, questions? All right, well thank you all for uh, taking an interest in Helio Motors. Just invite you all to come on in and take a look. We're going to lift the hood up and you get some uh, shots of the engine inside. You got airbags on both sides? So, one here. And in the steering wheel. One here, one here, one here.